Hey everyone, Vegetarian Zombie here, and I want to welcome you back to another episode of my Intro to Twine series. In this video, I'm going to be covering hooks. So let's just dive into it. What is a hook? Well, if you've been watching this series, you've actually been watching lots and lots of hooks. In fact, I've been using hooks almost every episode now. So what is a hook? Let's see. Well, I'm going to open this up, this living quarters, and you can see we got a lot of code here. And the first thing, we'll, we'll look at this line right here. You can see we have this if statement. It's an if display intro text equals zero. And what this is actually is known as a macro. And there are lots and lots of macros in Twine. And they're all different types. There are value macros, assignment macros, sensor macros, and so forth. In fact, there's so much, so many different types of macros that I'll be covering them in detail in another video somewhat down the road. Actually, not, not too far from now. So we have this macro here. Well, what is this? This is actually a hook. This is a special bit of text that is being processed right after the, ma the macro. You can see we have just regular text, and then we have another macro inside of this as well. And this is a special kind of hook. Well, it's, I should say, it's called an anonymous hook. There, that means there's no name attached to it. And when working with Twine, you're going to be using these a lot. In fact, the majority of the time when working with hooks, you'll be using these. So one thing anonymous hooks do give us is, an, is a nice little feature. And I'm going to take advantage of that right now. I'm going to open up the hallway here. And you can see we have a check your inventory linking to an inventory. Well, what happens if you haven't picked anything up? Well, we may not want to show this to the user. So let's let's make this conditional. So I'm going to come up to the top here and I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to call this, let's say, carrying items. And we're going to set this to false. So right now you start off, you're not carrying anything. And then when you come down to items acquired, we're going to set this to true. So we've set that to true, you've picked up an item, and now we're gonna add a condition. Now I can do an if statement to check an if check to see if I'm carrying an item, but one thing anonymous hooks do give us is a way to make things much simpler than an if statement. I'll start off by typing carrying items. And what this is, is it's doing a logic check. If I'm gonna, if this is true, then it's going to do the following hook. If this is false, nothing will be printed out. So what I can do is do a link go to and then link to the actual inventory. Like so. So if this is true, it's going to link Check your inventory, and when the user clicks that link, it's going to send them over to inventory. So let's let's see this in action. I'm gonna play. This was an extra file there. We're gonna open our eyes, roll out of bed. We're gonna go into the hallway, and you can see that link is no longer there. And if we come into here, you can see it's now it's still there. And one thing you should notice is that the connection between hallway to inventory is gone. In some cases, this could be a disadvantage. For instance, I'm going to want to see my, a lot of my connections. But in this case, inventory is going to be a general, a general passage, which I'll probably, probably be sending the user over there a lot from various different passages. So it's actually, in this case, a bonus that there's not an arrow connecting it. Otherwise, if there was a whole bunch of passages connecting to the inventory, it would quickly get out of hand. Okay, let's see this working now. We're gonna open our eyes, we're gonna roll out of bed, we're gonna take the badge, we're gonna choose done. Now we're gonna go into the hallway and you can see now, check your inventory is there. So it's a nice little feature. So we have anonymous hooks. One thing we also have are named hooks. And these are hooks that we can we can provide a name to 
which will then we can send into certain macros that can do processing on them. And this gets important when I when I'll cover macros, you'll see what kind of macros will work with named hooks. But let's give an example how they work. So here we have open the airlock. I'm not if when the user clicks this open the airlock, it's they're just going to die. So we might not want to make them make that choice right away. We might want to ask them, are you really sure you want to do this? And we're going to do this by using a named hook. To use a named hook, first we're going to create a hook. And a hook, again, is just any text, special text between these brackets. So I'm just going to do like so. Let's say open the airlock, like so. And now I'm going to give it a name. Now I can give it, I can provide a name before the hook, or I can provide the name after the hook. And the way I'm going to provide the name is in this little thing here. <laughs> it's like a triangle. So you can see this is, you're going to put the name within this. So I believe this is the less than sign and the pipe. And I'm going to call this airlock, like so. And you can see it forms, you can think of this as almost like ASCII art. It's forming a triangle with your name in the center of it. And conversely, if I wanted to give the hook over here, I would put the pipe and then the greater than sign. Well, then the name like so. So now this airlock name is referring to this little bit of text here. And when I'm working with when I'm working with macros and I want to reference this, I'm not going to use the dollar sign. I'm going to be using the question mark. So here I'm going to do a click. And now I want to reference this text here, this hook. So I'm going to put question mark airlock like so. And now this click macro will then apply to this named hook. So here I am, I'm putting, I'm now putting an anonymous hook with inside of it. And I'm going to replace, I'm going to be using the replace macro. And again, I'm going to provide airlock. And now we'll just add a link. In fact, what I can do is make it even simpler and just do a link go to. And now, so we can see we have our named hook. We're gonna, when the user clicks on it, it's going to replace the this text with open the airlock with this text in here. Are you sure? And if they click it, they're going to go to the airlock. Let's see this in action. Let's open our eyes. Let's roll out of bed. We're going to go to the hallway. We're going to open the airlock. And there we have an error. Let's check this out. In fact, what I can do is open this in debug mode. Let's see this, what it's trying to tell us. Let's open the airlock, and again, we don't have any information here. So I was missing a quote which of course broke the whole thing up. But what you were seeing me doing is when I was hitting enter here, this is just a way of separating this on bracket by bracket to make it a little more legible. Let's tr now let's give this another play. I'm just gonna close these here to make sure we have a fresh tab. And we're gonna open our eyes, roll out of, roll out of bed. We're gonna go into the hallway and now we'll open the airlock. Are you sure? Yep. And boom, we're dead. Generally speaking, I don't really like to end my stories like this, but in this case, it's appropriate. And that's working with named hooks. Typically, you won't be using a lot of named hooks, but if you ever need to use them, as you can see, they're right here at your disposal.